Okay, I think we are live. We are live. Hi. Um, this is a first for my channel. This is the first live video. So hi, welcome. I'm B. I typically post videos about true crime and current events. And um, they're usually, <laughs> the current events videos are a little bit lighter than this. And the true crime videos are typically things that, um, I don't know, they're a little bit older. And so maybe they're not as serious, but I heard about this story this morning and I couldn't get it off my head. So here we go. I just wanted to go over this really quick because there is something that is happening in South Carolina right now that was announced today that people need to be aware of and maybe we can do something to help rectify the situation. So here's the story. Um, last year in 2018, a man named Bobby Paul Edwards, he admitted to using violence, threats, isolation, and intimidation to force an employee of his restaurant named John Christopher Smith to work as basically, I don't want to say a human slave, but essentially he did not pay this man. He forced him to live in an apartment that was connected to the restaurant that he managed. And so it was called, or it is called J&J &J Cafeteria, and it's in San Conway, South Carolina. He forced um, John Christopher Smith to work more than 100 hours a week without pay between 2009 and 2014. And so last year, he did plead guilty. The charge was one count of forced labor. And, you know, he admitted that he did it. But basically, Smith, this man who was forced to work there without pay, he started working there when he was 12. He worked there for 20 years, apparently without incident. Everything was fine. He was a busser and he did dishwashing and stuff like that. And then in 2009, uh, Bobby Paul Edwards took over as the manager and started forcing um, him to do all these things, basically kept him as a slave, was violent towards him, was abusive towards him, did really horrible things. And um, in the court documents, they describe beatings with a belt, choking, slapping, punching with a closed fist, and burning with hot tongs in grease. There was even one um, episode where Edwards beat Smith with a frying pan because he wasn't working fast enough. And like I said, he was forced to live in an apartment that was attached to the restaurant. It was apparently infested with roaches. It was not healthy living quarters. And on top of it, uh, Bobby Paul Edwards kept Smith away from his family. And the reason that this is really important, especially, is because Smith has a develop he has a cognitive disability. So I don't know if that's a developmental delay, what have you, but this man is not at a full typical functioning capacity. So he is very, I don't want to say very vulnerable, but the fact that um, Smith was able to control him like this indicates that he is, you know, obviously this man is high functioning. He worked there for 20 years, but he is still someone susceptible to other people's control and you know he was controlled by violence threats just general aggressiveness uh there was additionally one episode where um bobby paul edwards the manager he dipped metal tongs into hot grease and he burned smith's neck and he further yelled at the victim and used racial slurs to belittle and demean him so <sighs> south carolina not the most, um, I, I don't know the words to describe it, but there, there tends to be a lot of racism in South Carolina. They have not progressed as far as we would like to see. So unfortunately, Edwards is white and Smith, the survivor of this abuse, he is a black man. And this went on from 2009 to 2014. And in 2014, finally, there was a regular customer who frequented J&J &J Cafeteria. Um, she, 
she or she noticed that Smith had like marks and burns on his body and reported it to the police, at which point they investigated and removed Smith from the situation. Apparently, other employees did notice that the abuse was going on. They were incident like they were witnesses to the incidents and they even heard Smith crying and, and saying, please, Bobby, no, and being abused by this person, but they were too afraid to come forward at the time. They have since testified from my understanding. Like I said, the the this happened in 2014. He confessed in 2018 and he was sentenced today. But this is the first time I've heard about it. This appears to be the first time that a lot of people have heard about the situation. So it's crazy. But there's a lot of stuff that we don't know. There's a lot of details that haven't really come out yet because it was essentially just reported on today. So here's the important part of it. Today, Bobby Paul Edwards, I thought it was his full name. Yeah, Bobby Paul Edwards was sentenced to 10 years in jail and ordered to pay restitution in the amount of $272,000 or $272,952.96 to John Christopher Smith, um, which I have kind of a problem with people of average working class being forced to pay or being ordered to pay restitution in such high amounts because while Smith does deserve that money, he worked for uh, at least 100 hours per week without pay. He definitely is entitled to that money, but I don't know that he'll see it. And the reason that I have a problem with it being included in the sentencing is because he was... Edwards was charged with one count of forced labor, which is technically human trafficking. It falls under the laws of that. And from my understanding, the minimum sentence for forced labor is 10 years. So the judge who sentenced him did give him more than the minimum sentence, but it is highly unlikely that Smith will be able to get that full restitution that is owed to him. So a lot of people are really upset over the jail sentence. They think it should be more increased. And I think because of the fact that they're saying like, oh, well, it's, you know, it's more than the minimum sentence. It's more than 10 years. The fact that it's restitution, I don't think that's right. I think that this person, Bobby Paul Edwards, he deserves more. And so a lot of people are mad. I look to see if we can find... Um, the judge, his name was R, his name is R. Brian Harwell, and he was appointed, he is the chief U.S. district judge for this area in Florence, South Carolina, and he was appointed in 2004 by George W. Bush. He doesn't have a Twitter. He was born in 59, I believe, so um, not necessarily surprising that he doesn't have a Twitter, and from my understanding, I don't know I don't think that a judge can increase a sentence after it has been handed down, but because it happened today, because it's so soon, I think if more people knew about it and more people were reaching out in a respectful manner, we could get some good like coverage on it. A lot of people have reported on it, but a lot of the news sites aren't really giving an opinion on how it, it's, it appears to be a very lenient sentence. This man, he is 54 years old. He's going to spend 10 years in jail, and then he's going to get out in his 60s, which is very young. Chances are he's probably not even going to serve that full sentence. He'll likely get out on parole. We've seen people who have committed far worse crimes serve much less time than he was sentenced to. So I really just don't think it's fair, and I think that it is important to express this opinion to Judge Harwell. So I want to include his information, his contact information. I would advise against contacting the court, like the general court number, because I thought about including it, but I was like, people who are answering those phones, they don't have a say in the sentencing. They're not, I don't know, coming from a customer service perspective, I'm like, they don't get paid enough to deal with it. But if you want to contact Judge R. Brian Harwell, um, I'm going to include this in the description as well, but his phone number is 843 
And all of this information is available on the district judges tab under um, like this on the South Carolina justice website. So this is public knowledge. You can go get it. But like I said, I will include it in the description. Um, so that's his phone number. There is a case administrator phone number, which is 843-676-3859. And you can email him at Harwell, H-A-R-W-E-L-L -L, underscore E-C-F, F as in Frank, at S, C as in cat, D as in dog, dot U-S courts dot gov. So, like I said, this sentence was already handed down. It was, it's already in the books as that is what it's supposed to be. But I think it's important to express displeasure at the leniency of the sentence. And I think it's important to do it in a way that is respectful because this person, like I said, I, I don't, I don't see him serving those full 10 years. And I know they'll garnish his wages if he can't pay the restitution, but that's a slow process and that is not going to get justice for Smith. And so I think it's important to really kind of come out and stand up for people who historically are victimized more often than others. And in this case, Smith is a black man and he has a developmental disability. So right there, that's kind of two elements of somebody who historically tends to get victimized and then victimized again by the court system when the people who commit crimes against them get sentences that don't really fit the crime. So he imprisoned this man for five years from 2009 to 2014 and um, he did it in public. He did it in front of a lot of people. Like I said, a lot of the other employees saw what happened. They were witness to it. It wasn't like he was trying to hide it. And um, so I don't think a short jail sentence is going to make a difference in this man's life. And I think that if he were to get out because so many people aren't talking about it, it would be very easy for someone not to know what happened and this could potentially happen again. So that is it for this one. Like I said, I just wanted to, because it happened today, I wanted to go live, talk about it really quick, just kind of get the story out there and like I said, encourage you to email Judge Harwell, give him a call, do whatever. You can't really tweet it at him. The courts in South Carolina, they do have a Twitter, but it is strictly like news. They're, they don't interact with people. They don't respond to tweets, nothing. So I don't know how much traction that would get, like how effective that would be. But if you contact him directly, send the message that it's not okay. Maybe we can get something done about this. And if not, the justice system is tricky, so I understand if they can't increase it after it's been, after the penalty has already been handed down, but we can hopefully change things for cases that are similar to this in the future. So that was it. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for being here for my first live stream. Um, that's all I have. Like I said, if you, if you do reach out, Please be respectful. Please don't just like send hate. Don't do that. Like make a good point. Make it so he wants to listen to us. And hopefully we can make a change for this case and for cases in the future. Thanks again so much for watching. And remember to go out there and be the voice of reason in a world full of crazy. <laughs> Bye.